Crowcoin is up 23.57% on a year-to-date basis, despite a very tough 2022 for this coin, a lot of FUD faced by the Crypto.com company, as well as the Kronos chain recently falling out of the top 10 blockchains in terms of TVL. Now, despite this, I do still remain bullish on Crowcoin, and we're going to break down in this video why I do still think there is a ton of growth ahead for this project in the future. What is up, investors, and welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show, where we keep you up to speed on the most important news moving the crypto markets now before we hop into the content make sure to hit that sub like and notification bell and with that we're going to start things off today with the question of the day and i want to know today are you still bullish on crow coin if you are still stacking and staking that crow let me know in the youtube comments down below and the reason i do want to make this video is because i discussed last week on the channel that i have seen a lot of negative sentiment towards crow recently there are a lot of bearish cases that I do see people making, so I want to address all of the bear cases and kind of offer my perspective on them and show you why I am still bullish on this project despite all the noise. So the first thing we are going to talk about here is in reference to the price. I think this is really important to talk about because the matter of fact is that markets are very emotional. When people see their favorite coins not moving, they begin to get bored, they begin to give up, and I believe that is definitely what we are seeing here with Crowcoin at the moment. So to put things into perspective, on a year-to-date basis, Crowcoin is up 23.57%. If you compare this to any traditional markets like the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, or the TSX, it is outperforming all of these by a very wide margin. But given that we are invested in crypto, I think the main thing that people are comparing Crowcoin to at the moment is Bitcoin, which I definitely do also think is the most fair and relevant comparison. And at the moment, if we take a look at Bitcoin's performance on a year-to-date basis, Bitcoin is up about 7 72%. So yes, Bitcoin has in fact been outperforming Crowcoin by a wide margin here. I mean, 72.9% versus like 23.5%. And I do believe this is one of the main factors that is causing a lot of negative sentiment around Crow when you actually see the largest cryptocurrency here on the market. And I do believe this is the first and probably the main contributor to some of the negative sentiment that I have seen surrounding Crowcoin so far this year. As people see the number one biggest blue chip in the crypto industry outperforming it by such a significant amount. And the first thing I do want to point out here right off the bat is that this is not just a Crowcoin specific issue. This is in fact happening with majority of the altcoins on the market. The matter of fact is if you do own an altcoin, the probability is that Bitcoin is in fact outperforming it with the exception of just a couple of alts and there's a couple of charts i'm going to show you guys to prove exactly what i'm talking about here the first one is bitcoin dominance which is up about 13 percent on a year-to-date basis and if we actually go ahead and take a look on a five-year chart here you're going to see that it does appear to be on the verge of a massive breakout above the 47.5 percent level of resistance this indicates to me that bitcoin is in fact set to outperform the altcoin market for the majority of this year and probably also beginning the next bull run which i do believe will correspond with the next Bitcoin having in 2024. This is something we have talked about on the channel multiple times, something I have positioned myself for accordingly. And that's the first point I kind of want to make is that this is not just a crow coin specific issue. This is simply Bitcoin once again stepping up and showing why it is the king of crypto, a normal part of these crypto market cycles. And if you don't believe that it is not just crow coin, I'm going to show you guys a couple of charts here from Benjamin Cowan, a very well known and very well respected technical analyst. You can see here that Solana versus Bitcoin is down 84% from that peak we have avax versus bitcoin here down 76.69 percent from the peak then you got polka dot here down 78.63 percent from the peak and last but not least cardano currently down 78.81 percent from the peak so effectively what this is showing you is that we do tend to see these these areas of outperformance from altcoins and we do also tend to see underperformance of altcoins as bitcoin does once again 
lead the charge. And Crowcoin is no exception to this sort of market dynamic that we have seen time and time again. And in fact, if we actually take a look here at the Crow versus Bitcoin valuation, you're going to notice that Crowcoin does go through these burst periods of outperforming Bitcoin. And then slowly over time, it does tend to outperform Bitcoin. The last major burst of outperformance we saw was back in November of 2021. This coincided with the peak of the last market cycle, also with a lot of the big advertising run that Crypto.com had done, including getting the naming rights to the Staple Arena. And since then, the Crow versus Bitcoin valuation has been bleeding out. I believe that it will continue to bleed out versus Bitcoin, just like the majority of the altcoin market will in terms of general market cycles. And that's okay because we are simply going to continue stacking and staking that crow and waiting for the next bull run and the next altcoin run more specifically where i do once again think that crow coin will be an outperformer so that is point number one i did want to make when it comes to crow coin now point number two i wanted to make is the fact that crypto.com faced a lot of fud over the past year and we actually saw them pretty much go ahead and fight all of this head on they are still operating and they're still a highly regulated exchange the strategy that i do think is going to pay off a lot lot in the next bull run. In fact, we can see here that even throughout the bear market, there was a ton of growth happening over at crypto.com. So we can see that on May 6 of 2022, crypto.com passed the 50 million user mark. And if we actually go ahead and take a look at their website today, they have now passed the 80 million user mark. So they added about 30 million more users throughout the bear market. And based on this growth trajectory, I do think that hitting the 100 million user milestone is more than likely to happen this year. I also think it says a a lot that they were able to grow this much throughout a bear market and that once we are back in a bull market when prices are going up when more people are paying attention when there is more sustained buying pressure and more FOMO that crypto.com is going to be a big beneficiary of actually onboarding the next wave of crypto users and that's because they are in fact a leader in regulatory compliance and security certifications now in the last bull run a lot of people were more concerned about chasing the highest yield possible on these platforms but given the absolute nuking of tons of centralized exchanges like celsius voyager ftx and blockfi i think a lot of people are now beginning to understand that security and regulatory compliance is number one to ensure that your assets are in fact safe on these platforms and this is definitely something crypto.com is very mindful of so here is a post from october 12th of 2022 kind of highlighting some of the growth developments they made throughout the bear market and this includes actually getting regulatory approval in france in dubai in singapore in the UK, in Australia, in South Korea. They got it here in Greece and Italy in the Cayman Islands in Cyprus. And they also actually are the first global crypto exchange to sign a pre-registration undertaking with the Ontario Securities Commission and Canada Securities Administrators. So I think it's pretty obvious based on the amount of regulatory approval that crypto.com has gotten that one of their main strategies is going to be to continue working on that compliance and regulation throughout the bear market to ensure that they can be be eligible to onboard crypto users globally in the next bull run. This is definitely a sort of like a business model that I do think is not going to pay off in the immediate moment, but in the long run, it will pay off. And this is kind of brings me to the next point I want to make that I do believe is worth mentioning is that just because we see growth and adoption of the crypto.com platform, that does not necessarily mean that we will see growth and adoption of Crowcoin unless there are programs being offered through crypto.com that actually incentivize people to hold and lock up their crow and that's going to lead me into the next two points for crow coin being the crypto.com visa as well as the crypto.com exchange that is still yet to roll out in the united states now when it comes to the visa first of all these visas did see some reward cuts in 2022 reward cuts that i was definitely not happy about i'm not justifying them and saying that somehow the visa program is the same as it was before the bear market because it is not clearly crypto.com cut back on the rewards and as a person personal holder and user of the visa this sucked okay now to put things in perspective though I kind of want to take a look at the visas where they are presently and just make the case that these visas, in my opinion, are still some of the best crypto visas available on the market. And it is also better as a crow coin holder for, for people to actually buy these visas as you do actually have to buy your crow and lock it up for a six month period to be eligible for them. So for the Ruby still, you need to lock up the equivalent of 400 USD worth of crow. The Royal Indigo and Jade Green, you have to lock up 4,000 USD worth of crow. The 
the Frosted Rose Gold and Icy White, you have to lock up 40,000 USD worth of crow. And for the Obsidian Black, 400,000 USD worth of crow. And the Ruby Steel comes in at 1% cash back, Royal Indigo and Jade Green at 2%, Frosted Rose Gold and Icy White at 3%, and Obsidian Black at 5% cash back. So you buy your crow, you lock it up for a six month period, and you get the cash back plus some other benefits here. And then you can see what happens after the six month lockup is done. You can go ahead and opt to unstake your crow, but if you do, boom, your rewards get neutered. So effectively, you are incentivized to not only buy the crow and lock it up for six months, but to pretty much keep it locked up indefinitely if you do want to continue getting these nice rewards from the visa. And the second thing I do want to actually point out is in regards to the cashback itself. So taking a look at these numbers, I do think they are deceiving right off the bat. For the Ruby Steel here, it is 1% cashback up to $25 equivalency for USD. And then Royal Indigo and Jade Green, 2% cashback up to $50 USD equivalency. And here's what I want to point out is that I'm sure you can find a visa out there that does offer one, maybe 2% in cashback. But how about you think about it like this? The cashback is in Crow. So let's say that right now you make a purchase and you get 2% in cashback at Crow while Crow is at six cents. The 2% cashback is based on your actual fiat dollars purchase, not based in Crow. That means effectively that if I was to spend, you know, let's say on the Ruby Steel, I was to spend $6 and getting 1% cashback of that would be six cents. That means that I am gonna be getting one Crow coin for a $6 purchase. Now let's go ahead and say that Crow doubles from there and goes up to 12 cents. That effectively means that that one crow you got valued at six cents, which was 1% cash back, is now 12 cents, which is equivalent to 2% cash back. And same thing goes with the Royal Indigo and Jade Green. Let's say you make a purchase for, uh, on the Visa, you get that 2% cash back in crow, and then crow doubles, you are getting 4% cash back. Crow triples, and you take profit, that is 6% cash back. And uh, it effectively means that, yes, your cash back you are getting at the time does scale with the price fluctuations of crow so the obvious risk worth noting here is that if crow was to cut in half that that two percent cash back you are getting is now instead actually one percent cash back on the royal indigo and jade green but i do kind of you know think if you are buying the visa that you do suspect that in the long run crow coin is going to go up like i do and so that's kind of why i do like to look at the cash back in that perspective because it is based in crow not in fiat dollars and as crow does go up in the next bull run or as i am expecting it to personally i think that all the cash back i am receiving now is going to be much greater than the percentage base actually offered on the cards on a day-to-day -day basis and the second point i do want to make here in terms of crypto.com incentivizing people to hold crow comes from the crypto.com exchange now this exchange is not yet available in the states this is an exchange that is sort of meant for more sophisticated trading they have spot trading derivatives trading they have uh, they also have margin trading here up to 5x i believe and they do also offer lower fees. And this is one complaint I have seen with the crypto.com main app is that the fees are definitely a little bit high on the platform. The fees are not high, the spreads are high. What they do is they say that it's 0% fees, but they actually go ahead and charge you on the spread. So if, they, if Ethereum is trading at like, let's say $1,700, crypto.com is gonna make you pay them, give or take, let's say 1720, 1730. And that difference there between the actual price of Ether and the spread they're giving you is sort of like the, the piece that they take effectively so they say zero percent fees but they do make some money on the spreads and that was just kind of an example of how they do make money but that's a big complaint i have seen about them is actually the spreads are a little high on the platform and this is something that the crypto.com exchange is meant to fix it is not yet rolled out in the states and i do believe that once it does this will onboard a ton of new users onto their platform they announced in march of last year they began rolling out this exchange to select institutional investors and although it can't be confirmed I do suspect that a reason this may have been delayed, you know, since it's pretty much been just over a year since they did launch this out to, to these select institutions, probably has to do with the lack of regulatory clarity in the U.S. That would just be my best guess, but I do hope the exchange does launch in the U.S. at some point this year or next year, because they do actually have a program here to stake your crow for some pretty juicy trading incentives. So you can see here that if you have anywhere between 50 and 100,000 crow locked up, you are paying zero 
0% on your maker fees and getting 12% off on the taker fees. Anywhere from 100,000 to 500,000 crow staked, you are getting a 0.01 basis point rebate on your maker fees and 15% off of taker fees. And anywhere from 500 crow upwards is 0.02% basis uh, basis point rebate on the maker fee and 20% off of the taker fee. Now for the 50 and 100,000 uh, crow staked, you are getting 4% APR and anywhere above 500,000 crow staked, you are getting 8% APR. So definitely incentivizing to go ahead and lock up your crow to get these trading rebates on the exchange and uh, right off the bat i mean for institutions who are trading millions of dollars worth on the platform potentially even getting a 0.01 basis point rebate on all of their trades could definitely be very incentivizing to them on top of the additional apr so i do believe that this is kind of the strategy crypto.com is going for with the exchange is actually incentivizing people to lock up their native token to have to basically not get charged as much on their trading on the platform it definitely a strategy that if it does go over with institutions i I think that this could be very big for them just basically holding crow coin to make their their transactions on the platform cheaper so that's another point in favor of crow coin once the exchange does go live in the united states and now kind of moving away from the centralized side of things with crypto.com i do want to get into the blockchain side of things to wrap this video up and the big thing i did speak about last week on the channel is that crow coin fell out of the top 10 blockchains in terms of tvl now the one thing i do want to mention right right off the bat and I do think it has had an impact on Kronos chain is the fact that Kronos actually did a launch here in early November of 2021. November of 2021 was the peak of the bull market, effectively meaning that the Kronos chain has not yet experienced the full cycle of a bull market. And despite this, it, it, it does still sit in 11th place across all blockchains in terms of TVL. Now, the one thing that's also worth mentioning is given that Kronos did launch in November of 2021, it's really only been out at this point for about a year and a half it is still very early on in sort of like its development stages there are still new upgrades rolling out still projects being rolled out on this blockchain and i do kind of want to see what they are able to come up with throughout the bear market and hopefully this blockchain is more established in terms of the ecosystem leading into the next bull run to kind of gauge that user attraction and hopefully crypto.com can bring a lot of attention to chronos and get even like a small percentage of that 80 million users they currently have onto the chronos chain so taking a look here at Kronos, I do want to compare it to other blockchains out there. And the first one here is the daily transactions. So Kronos is doing about 50,000 transactions per day, which if we compare this to BNB chain doing give or take like 3.5 million transactions per day, or Polygon here doing like give or take, let's say 2, 2 million transactions per day. I mean, that's definitely not a super good look for Kronos. They are definitely low on the transactions when compared to BNB and Polygon. And yes, I do think that is something worth worth mentioning just for the sheer uh, purpose that if we do want Kronos to actually catch up here and get back into the top 10, we have to kind of look at what it is up against. And we have Binance Smart Chain in second place here, Polygon in sixth place. So this is kind of what I'm using as a reference point for the transactions, as well as the wallet addresses. Now, if we take a look at the wallet addresses, I did also put it on the chart here that the Binance Smart Chain has 275 million wallet addresses, Polygon at 226 million, and Kronos coming in at just 1.1 one million wallet addresses so chronos is definitely far behind these blockchains in terms of the wallet addresses in terms of the average transactions and therefore also in terms of the total value locked and even to get back in 10th place here i mean mixin is coming in here with 40 436 million in tvl and chronos coming in here with 382 million meaning that right off the bat chronos has to get about 54 million dollars worth of money back onto the platform to get back into 10th place actually more than that to basically pass mix in and then beyond that solana is up here with 500 or sorry phantom is in ninth place with 523 million so that would effectively be about 141 mil 142 mil to get ahead of phantom and put itself back in ninth place but while I was crunching these numbers, it did kind of make me think about something. And that's the fact that when I actually invested in Crowcoin, the Kronos chain was not even a thing yet, okay? The main reason that I actually invested in Crowcoin was one, because I do believe Crypto.com is going to continue growing at a rapid pace. Two, I do enjoy using the Crypto.com visa. I think it is one of the best crypto visas that I personally can use at the moment in terms of the cashback rewards. And three was the Crypto.org chain and the very 
nice staking rewards that are offered on this blockchain. So you can see here at the moment, if we take a look at the crypto.org chain, the average APY for some of the biggest validators here comes in at about 10.94%. This is a very juicy yield for a blockchain to offer and effectively it does create a system where you can go ahead and lock up your crow for the visa or you can simply just buy crow on the main app and directly transfer it to the uh, to the crypto.com DeFi wallet and stake it for a juicy 10.94%. If you do want to learn how to earn yourself some nice double digit APY on your crow coin, I will leave a link in the in the description down below to the video where I break all that down in the in the tutorial if I can remember to do so. Then we're pretty much walk you through step by step how you can start to earn yield on your crow coin but the point being here is that this was one of the big reasons that i had personally invested in crow coin and to me the chronos chain is pretty much just like a bonus at this point right like the, the chronos chain was not even here when i invested in crow and if it does take off if it is successful that would be amazing for the platform and for crow coin itself in my opinion but it's not even like one of the top three reasons that i was invested in crow coin when i decided to go ahead and make my first purchase now, when it comes to the crypto.org chain, I would like to point out that despite kind of like the stunted growth of the Kronos chain, and by all means, I mean, it has pretty much flatlined here. You can see here that we're kind of just bleeding out here from 463 mil in TVL in November of last year, now down to about 382 mil. If we also take a look here in terms of the amount of Crow, kind of flat since January of this year at about 5.19 billion Crow. But now let's take a look at the crypto.org chain, which has actually been a consistent grower throughout the bull market as well as the bear market so taking a look here we can actually see just how much crow coin has been delegated in the past month and we can see that as of march 1st there was 5.43 billion crow that is now sitting at about 5.49 billion crow staked on the crypto.org chain an increase of about 70 million from the beginning of march alone and that does actually take us to about 21.2 percent of all crow in circulation being locked up on this blockchain so of the five point sorry of the total supply right now the circulating supply at 25 ish just under 26 billion a total supply at 30 billion and the amount of crow locked up on the crypto.org chain coming in at 5.5 billion just over that that means that at the moment of all crow currently circulating we have about 21.2 percent so just over a fifth of all crow in circulation locked up on this blockchain and the reason this is important is because if you actually want to get your crow back from the crypto.org chain it has to go through a 28 day unbonding period effectively meaning that even if everybody on the crypto.org chain wanted to unstake their crow today one fifth of the flow would still be out of their hands for the next 28 days in my opinion that is very bullish for the actual price action of crow coin over the long run now speaking of the price action i've kind of talked in this video about how i am bullish on crow coin if you have managed to make it to the end i do want you to answer this question in the youtube comments down below if you so choose i want to know if you would be interested in seeing an updated crow coin price prediction where we kind of walk you guys through some price calculations and some price comparisons using the supply as well as drawing it up against some other exchange tokens like bnb and okx token if that is something you guys would be interested in let me know in the youtube comments down below and uh, that's about all I got for today. So I hope you did enjoy the content in today's video. You know what to do. If you made it all the way to the end, you are an absolute champion. Let me know in the YouTube comments down below and claim that champion status. I hope you are all having an amazing Friday and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace out for now.